Well, good morning. good morning, and welcome to worship here at Bluff Park United Methodist Church. All are welcome here at our church, and whether you're worshiping with us online or in person this morning, we are so glad that you are here. And if you don't mind, if you could take just a second to let us know that you're worshiping with us today. If you're here with us in person, you can do that in one of three ways. You're going to find the first two ways on page one of your bulletin. On that page, you're going to see a QR code. You can register your attendance using that QR code and your smartphone, or you can simply fill out the bottom portion of that page with a pen or a pencil, tear it off, and leave it in the pew where you're sitting when you leave the service today. The third way you can register your attendance is using the registration pads that you're going to find in each one of our pews. One small favor to ask, if you do register your attendance using the registration pads or the bottom portion of page one, we just ask that you put that on one side of your pew or the other at the end of the service. This will make it just a little easier for our, our ushers to pick those up at the end of the service. If you're worshiping with us online, we'd also love for you to register your attendance this morning. And the best way for you to do that is if you're worshiping with us on Facebook or YouTube, you're going to find a registration link in the description to the video that you're watching. And if you're worshiping with us on our church's website, you're going to find that same registration link either to the right or directly below the video that you're watching. We hope that everyone will register your attendance in some way this morning. We would love to know that you're here. We'd love to welcome you to our church, and we'd love to help you stay connected to our church. So as you're registering your attendance in some way this morning, we also want to draw your attention to a section in your bulletin labeled Today's Top Announcements. You're going to find those on page 8. These are things we really want you to see and hear about this morning. So please be sure to read through all three of those announcements and all of the details. They are all important. And if you have any questions at all about anything you see in that section of your bulletin, throughout your bulletin, or anything about our church in general, we invite you to visit our welcome desk in the narthex on your way out of the service this morning, or call our church office anytime throughout the week, Monday through Friday from 8 to 4. We'd be happy to help answer your questions. One additional quick announcement, Miss Debbie Whitcomb asked me to let everyone know that if you would like one of our church name tags, Kevin's got one on right there, and I see, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and I see there are others that have them on, but if you would like one of those just to let everyone know who you are and so to help us all learn each other's names, you can visit Debbie at the welcome desk after the service. Sign up for that and she will get you a name tag. At this time, I'd like to invite up Reagan Sanders, the family ministry summer intern here at our church. She is going to be giving us an update on the recent ASP mission trip in our student ministry. Hey everyone, my name is Reagan, uh, Reagan Sanders, and like Stanley said, I've gotten the gift of being the family ministries intern for this summer. Um, so we've done a lot of cool things. We've gone to the water park, we've gone to Six Flags, we've done adventure camp and camp on the bluff. Um, but one of the most interesting and most fun um, and most life-giving things that we've gotten to do recently is we got to take our high schoolers on a trip um, for, to work with the Appalachian Service Project. Um, which is a trip that has been a part of Bluff Park for a really long time. Um, and for some of our students, they had been before, uh, but for more than half of our group, this was the first time that they'd ever gotten to be a part of this trip. And it was also the first time I've ever gotten to be a part of this trip. Um, and for a lot of them, it was also the first mission trip that they'd ever gotten to go on. So this was a really great experience. We got to go work with, like I said, Appalachia Service Project. Um, who works to provide um, safe, warm, and dry housing all across Appalachia. Um, so we got to take our students to Harlan County, Kentucky. Uh, we got to celebrate Fourth of July in that community. We got to meet volunteers from a lot of different churches and work with the staff who are working there. Um, and we had a really great time. The kids had a lot of fun and they worked really hard. Uh, one of our groups was working on a roof with Mr. Steve um, and they did an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, another group of our students was working on putting in floor coverings and baseboards and that was my team and I would say we also did a great job. Um, we had such a great time. We loved getting to spend time together and to get invested in that community. Um, and to really get to reintroduce this trip that we haven't gotten to go on in a while because of COVID. Um, it was super nice to be able to reintroduce the idea of getting to go outside of our community and go places where we haven't been before and we might not get to experience otherwise. And to get to serve people there and to get to know people there and to partner with the people who are doing that work there every day. 
Um, it was such a great gift, and it was so amazing to get to see the students working so hard and so passionately um, when it was so hot and sometimes so miserable out. Um, but we really had so much fun, and it was so great to get to see them grow and thrive and learn how to use a saw and climb a ladder for the first time. Um, it was really beautiful, and I'm so looking forward to seeing how these students get to serve on ASP and on other mission trips in the future. And it's been such a gift to get to work with them this summer. So thank you all for trusting us with your students and your kids. They're amazing. Thank you, Reagan. We are a community of Christian friends here at Bluff Park. And as friends, we love to celebrate life's important moments with one another. So if you have had a birthday in the last week or the week to come and you're worshiping with us online, we'd love to celebrate with you today. We invite you to put that in the comment section. And if you're here with us in person this morning, you've had a birthday, we invite you to stand at this time. Let us know what day. We'd love to celebrate with you. Walter, Wednesday, happy birthday. Yes. Tomorrow, happy birthday. Jean, Tuesday, happy birthday. Woody, today, happy birthday. Oh, Thursday, happy birthday. Lots of birthdays today. Any others? Woody's pointing at me. Today is my birthday as well, so. <laughs> Thank you, Woody. <laughs> We do have one that we want to add. You'll notice the rosebud on the altar. That is in honor of Walker Abbott Sherman, who was born this past week. The name we have in our bulletin on page three is wrong there. That is for Walter Abbott Sherman. And we want to say congratulations to the Sherman and Walker family on Walker's birth. Uh, how about any wedding anniversaries? We have any wedding anniversaries we can celebrate online or in person? So many birthdays, but no wedding anniversaries. All right, well, we do have one to add. We did find out this past week that two members of our church, Bill and Peggy Fields, celebrated their 69th wedding anniversary this past week. So would you join me in congratulating them? Congratulations, Bill and Peggy, and happy birthday and happy anniversary to all of you who stood and all of you who mentioned it online. Friends, again, we are so excited that each and every one of you have joined us for worship today. We are so glad that you are here. And as we begin our worship service now, let us center our hearts and minds before God as the choir leads us into worship.
As a church family, we have gathered together this morning to grow closer to Christ in both our hearts and our minds. As we continue in worship now, let us all join together in the historic words of the Apostles' Creed as we profess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated. And at this time, we'd like to invite our ushers forward, and we will collect our morning offering. Our offering is an act of worship in which we thank God for the many blessings he has bestowed upon us in our lives, in which we seek to practice loving our neighbors as ourselves, and in which we place our faith and trust in God. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you would help us to worship you through this offering we are about to receive. We pray that this offering will be used for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, and may it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
We now turn to a time of concerns of the church family. And if you'll take notice of the names printed in your bulletin on page 7, these are the names of people in our church who are in need of our prayers this week. You also see on that page of your bulletin a blank box. This is a place for you to put your own prayer request, either for yourselves or for others you know who are in need of prayer this week. And if you have a name that you would like to add to our church's prayer list, you can do that by sending us an email to care at bpumc.org, or you'll have an opportunity to do that if you register your attendance in one of the two ways mentioned on page one. We do want to add one thing to the prayer list this morning. We want to add the Shanlever family. Trisha Shanlever passed away over the weekend, and she will be having a visitation on Tuesday, July 19th from 4 to 6 o'clock at the River Chase Church of Christ. So please keep the Shanlever family in your prayers this week. Friends, we invite you to read over and pray over all the names on that page at some point throughout the morning. And then consider taking your bulletin home and praying for those people throughout your week as well. As we begin our time of prayer, hear now this call to confession. The grace of God is a free gift. There is nothing we can do to earn it. We receive it through faith by believing in Jesus Christ, our Savior, trusting in Christ's mercy, and with gratitude for this free and precious gift, let us confess our sin together. Gracious God, we confess to you today that we often find ourselves feeling bitter, distraught, and ashamed. In an effort to feel better about ourselves, we overfill our plates with tasks, hoping to atone for our misdeeds. We confess that we have practiced deceit, fearful of being exposed. We confess that far too often we choose busyness over the gift of your loving presence. We ask your forgiveness to envelop us, inspiring us to make amends with ourselves and others. Open our eyes that we may see you sitting before us, beckoning for us to come and join you in rest for a while. Amen. May we choose the better part through God's gracious gift which will never be taken away from us. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now let us spend a moment in silent prayer. God, we thank you for this day and the many blessings, both big and small, that you have bestowed upon us this week. We thank you for our friends and family, for things that have made us laugh and smile this week, for Vacation Bible School starting this week, and for a wonderful place to worship you today. During this time of worship, may we be able to put aside the concerns of our daily lives, let go of all the demands that crowd upon us, and simply be present here with your Spirit. Lord, we pray for the people on our prayer list this morning and for others who are near and dear to us who stand in need of your healing mercies and compassionate love. We pray that you would walk with them, guide them, and help them, and that you would give us the strength and wisdom to help them as well in whatever ways that we can. God, you have called us to be peacemakers and people who will offer our lives and our gifts in your service. But sometimes we hold back from trusting in these gifts you have given to us. We wonder if they will be enough to make a difference. And we become caught in the trap of believing that only the largest gifts have any worth. Forgive us when we slide so easily into our fears of inadequacy. Each of us has been blessed, and each is called to be a blessing. There are no small and insignificant gifts for you to bless and use. Free us from our fears of not enough and help us to joyfully place our hopes, dreams, and lives in your care. As we have lifted up people we know who are in need of your healing mercies and comforting power this morning, help us to feel those same mercies and comfort in our lives, reminding us that your love is poured out on us so that we may serve, 
help and love others. Strengthen and encourage us as we move forward in ministry, seeking to be good stewards of all that you have given us. And may we never forget that you are always with us and you will always love us. For we ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'd like to invite all of our elementary age children to Children's Church. And if they would like to go, they can meet me in the back of the sanctuary. And I'll have them back up here waiting on you in the narthex at the conclusion of the service. As they are making their way back, let us all remain seated and sing together hymn number 400, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
I invite you to stand as you are able and desire oh, no, I'm sorry. to pray together our prayer for illumination, which is found printed for you in your order of service, and to remain standing as you are able and desire out of respect for the reading of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this day. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, by the guidance of your spirit, instruct and teach us in the way we should go. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading comes to us from the gospel account of St. Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning in verse 38. Hear now the word of the Lord. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. At this point in time, I'm not really sure how many sermons, Bible studies, Sunday school lessons, devotions, email devotions, written books, commentaries, and for that matter, a couple of songs that have been, I have heard that reference or speak about this particular passage in the gospel account of St. Luke, the passage of Mary and Martha. I'm sure many of you have heard all of this before as well. And you may have, like me, read some of these books or heard sermons or Sunday school lessons or Bible studies or whatever about it. And it's not a parable. This is, this is what occurred Jesus is going through Bethany. He has got his disciples in tow. This Bethany is where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus live. We know that Jesus is friends with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Martha sees Jesus and says, hey, why don't you come over? And Jesus says, that would be great, but I've got, you know, my guys here with me. You should bring them too. And so they all come over to her house. Every one of those sermons, Bible studies, Sunday school lessons, devotions, books, all talk about that. But they reduce this passage to being little more than be like Mary, don't be like Martha. Right? Do you agree? That's how, that's how it goes. Be like Mary, don't be like Martha. Martha is busy and distracted. Be like Mary. And yeah, I think that's the plain meaning, but I don't think that quite gets it, does it? I mean, let's stop and think about this for a second, shall we? Martha isn't distracted because she's hosting a quilting club when Jesus came over. Martha's not distracted because she has her iPhone open with Calendly going on. And tell, reminding her of all of the appointments that she has that day. Martha's not distracted because there's kids that are running around and she's trying to take care of them. Martha is distracted because Jesus has come into her home with 12 other people. All right? Now, if I'm doing my math right, y'all check me. That's 13 people right there. There's her, there's Mary, and Lazarus. 13 plus 3, that's 16. There's no indication that Jesus called ahead. There's no indication that they switched emails. There's no indication that Jesus texted her and said, Hey, pop it in today. Is it a good time? <laughs> Jesus just shows up, and Bethany and Martha goes, Please, come over. I love you guys. 
But if 16 of you all show up at the house at the same time, y'all going to have to give good notice because there's not a single room we could put you all in. Now, if y'all are bringing food, we'll make room. (laughs) But what Martha is distracted with, distracted, as if she's just not interested, is she is preparing a meal for Jesus and the disciples. She is doing something for Christ. Did Did we miss that somewhere? Martha is busy doing something for Jesus. Martha is busy doing holy work. I know I've only been here. This is only my third Sunday, two full weeks. But I can go ahead and tell you, if it were not for the Marthas of Bluff Park United Methodist Church, we would shut down tomorrow. Y'all are always here. And I refuse to let Martha get a bad rap because I don't think that's what Jesus is getting with here. There are a couple of things, though. Martha's gotten herself all churned up, right? She's busy. She's hurried. She's hurting. She's worried. She wants everything to be right. She wants to make sure the bread doesn't burn. She wants to make sure the greens don't stick. She wants to make sure that the fat back is ready to go. Maybe not fat back. (laughs) Now that I want fat back. Anyway. She just wants a little bit of help. She comes to ask Mary. And I know this isn't scriptural. This is just me implying, but I don't think she just immediately went to Jesus and threw her sister under the bus. I think she went to Mary first and said, hey, Mary, come here, help me. You know, have you ever done that before? Where you need a little bit of help, but your person that's supposed to be helping you is in front of another guest, so you're trying not to be rude, so you just go and go, hey, excuse me, hey, dear, would you mind coming with me in the kitchen? Yeah, I'll be there in a minute. I bet she has done that. I bet she's done that two or three times. But now then, here is Jesus in the living room with the disciples, with Lazarus, with, with Mary, and they are having a great, wonderful discussion. They're having a great, wonderful time, and Martha's stuck in the kitchen, and she wants to be in there, and if Mary would just come and help her, she could get there. And she has been nice. So she goes to Jesus and says, Hey, Jesus, would you mind telling her to come help me so that I can go ahead and get this done and we can enjoy this together? It's not an unreasonable request. But here is where Martha misses it. Where in the passage did Jesus ask her to fix them a meal? Where in the passage did Jesus ask her to be busy in that moment? Mm. I think if Jesus was friends with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, then what Jesus really wanted was to come and sit down on their couch and have a visit with them. You know what I mean? Mamas, grandmamas who's got kids that have gone away to school or gone away to work and they come home. If you're anything like my granny was, whenever I came home, she wanted to fix me a meal because she was scared to death I wasn't eating. But do you know what I wanted? I wanted to sit on the sofa and have a conversation with my granny. Because let me tell you something. I've met a hundred good cooks in Bluff Park by themselves. And I've had some really good food. But you don't know what I'd give to have one more conversation with my granny. Guys, we want to follow Jesus Christ. We want to do what God has called us to do. We want to be who God has called us to be. We want to engage the world the way God is calling us to engage the world. We want to see Bluff Park flourish in the kingdom of God. We want to help people. We want to bring them closer to Christ. We want them to understand that every single one of us is carrying burdens we're not called to carry. And we want to introduce them to the one who is not only there when the world came into creation, but the one who holds it all together, the one who holds us in the palm of his nail-pierced hand. 
Guys, when we start to feel that and we know God is calling us, then we want to move and we want to go and we want to do. And guys, we have to. We can't just everybody take a break. But you know, when you go back and you read the scriptures, every one of the callings of Christ began with a conversation. Every single person that Jesus called, he talked with them first. And did you know that Jesus even took time to go off by himself to pray? The son to spend time with the father. It's not that we shouldn't have a, have a Martha heart or that we need to discover a Mary heart in, Martha's, in, in, in a Martha world or any of these other slogans and titles that we use to forget about what Martha is doing. What Martha is doing is important and the point is, is there was time and there was place for it. But because she started to get all churned up and she started to get ahead of it, she missed she missed the fact that Jesus Christ is sitting in her living room. That Jesus Christ is right there. And that what Jesus wanted in that moment, when he could literally be anywhere, was to spend a little time with one of his friends. Don't get so busy working for the Lord But you forget to spend Sabbath with him. That at the end of the day, Christ did not give himself to us so that we would go and be busy. But rather so that we would into a, enter into a relationship through him, with him, and by him. That we would be called his pop quiz this morning. What does the New Testament call us most of all? Followers? No. Disciples? Uh-uh. Workers? Not quite. What does the New Testament call us most of all? Say that a little louder. Children of God. And parents, what's the number one thing you want to do with your kids? But now, right now, I've got a 14-year-old and an 11-year-old. I'm trying my best to figure out how to get them out of the house. <laughs> I want to see them fly. I want to see them do great things. But you know what? When my son came back from ASP, do you know what the first thing I wanted to do? I wanted to sit down and talk to him all about it. I wanted to hear how it was going. I want to hear what he did. Never mind the fact that JT had already filled me in. I wanted to hear it from him. I can guarantee you after my kids' first day of school in their new schools, don't call. I won't take it because I'm going to be talking to my kids, finding out how their day was. Because as a parent, I want to spend time with my kids. Do we forget that sometimes? Do we forget that we are called children more often than any other title in the New Testament? That we are adopted through Jesus Christ our Lord into the family of God? I mean, you see all this stuff here, all these terms and all these titles. When, when did organization replace family? When did institution replace relationship? When did getting it all right replace being together in the very real presence of Christ? Guys, Martha's not wrong. There is work to do. And there was things that she needed to get done. And it was an offering to God. And there was a calling. And there was an equipping. And there's a sending. But number one, before we jump on what it is that we're doing for God, let's make sure that's what God has called us and asked us to do. Let's make sure that it's at the time that God is calling us and asking us to do it. And let's not forget, let's not forget that our Heavenly Father wants to spend time with His children. Not just to stir us up and send us out. 
Yes, to go and do all the wonderful, amazing, God-ordained things that God has called us and sent us to do. But also to be in the very divine presence of God. To be with God. To draw from God's strength. To nurture the relationship that we have through Jesus Christ. The linchpin for me in understanding this is what Christ responds back to Martha with. He doesn't respond back to Martha with, Martha, you're doing all the wrong things. Martha, you're distracted and you you don't get it. Martha, what you're doing is unimportant. Does Jesus say any of that? No, what he says is, is, Martha, Martha, you're distracted by many things. A lot of things that's going on, Martha. But Mary's chosen the better part. What you're doing is good, Martha. In order for something to be better, it's got to be good to start with, right? Martha, what you're doing is good and it's valuable. But in trying to work to do something for me, you're missing the better part. The invitation to be with me. We need Martha's, and we need Mary's, and we trust that Christ calls us at the appropriate time and place and invites us to be whom it is that God is needing and wanting in that moment. There's plenty of room around Martha's table, and there's plenty of work for Martha to do, and there's plenty of things that Martha wants to get done. And they are all needed. But there's time for it. Martha, don't miss it when Christ is sitting right in front of you. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, so often it is so easy to read this passage and just hear you say to us, Be like Mary, don't be like Martha. And that misses it. God, who we are called to be is who you are calling us to be. And the work that we do is important and is needed and is timely. But God, sometimes, God, sometimes we can get so focused on the work, we can forget why we're doing it in the first place who is calling us, who is sending us, who holds us, who who empowers us. And God, who we're called to spend time with. God, when the demands of the urgent just overwhelm us, when everything seems to fall apart, or when there seems to be too much going on and not enough time to get it all accomplished, when we feel like we can't stop, remind us those moments especially is when we need to stop, to come sit with you for a while. Because at the end of the day, God, you could snap your fingers, speak your word, and whatever you wanted accomplished would be accomplished. But you didn't die to save us for the tasks at hand. You died to save us, to make us your children. And like any perfect father, you want to spend time with your kids. May your kids be open to spending time with you. For it's through Jesus Christ and in the power and presence of the Holy Spirit we dare to pray. Amen. take your hymnal and turn to hymn 399 as we stand together and sing.
Would you lift your hearts with me and receive now this benediction? May we go forth, seeking to live each day, accomplishing the task which God has called us, equips us, and sends us to do, but never allowing the task to replace the time that God seeks to spend with us. For it's in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit who guides. Amen.